the landmarks of the skull. This is part two, doing them alphabetically. So the next thing is the Christa Galley. We mentioned it in part one. It's right here. If this were a sailboat, this would be the sail of the sailboat. This is the ethmoid bone. Uh, it's interesting that you see them in a female skull, they're quite thin. In a male skull, they tend to be a little bit thicker. You can see it also in this skull right here. This is a male skull, a little bit thicker. That's a Krista galley. On either side of it is a perboform plate. Next thing we're going to take a look at is a fontanelle. Now, some of you have probably heard of fontanelles. You may have referred to it in a baby as a soft spot. This is a fetal skull. And here's the fontanelle, soft spot. You can also see that the frontal bone in a fetal skull is two bones, it's not one bone. And then there's another fontanelle here between the two parietal bones and the occipital bone. And then we have one more soft spot right here uh, that separates the parietal bones primarily from the temporal bone. So those are the fontanelles. The name means little fountain and in a, uh, a newborn baby, if you palpate on the fontanelle, you can actually feel the blood pulsing through underneath. We have the frontal sinus. I don't have a skull right here with a frontal sinus. We have the external occipital protuberance. External occipital protuberance is a bump on the skull right here, occipital bone, and it's a point of attachment for part of the trapezius muscle. Then we have the greater wing of the sphenoid. I'm going to show you the greater wing on the colored skull first, and then we'll transfer over. If we turn the skull around and look in toward the anterior side of the skull, here's a greater wing here and here, left side, right side. But we can also see the greater wing on the outside of the skull between the temporal and the zygomatic bones. So this, if this were tagged here, this would be the greater wing of the sphenoid. Well, it wouldn't be tagged there on a colored skull, so I'll show it to you on a white skull. On a white skull, you may be able to see there's a suture separating the sphenoid from the temporal, parietal, and frontal, and that's the greater wing in the sphenoid. And if we look into the skull, this is the greater wing up in here, and this is the greater wing up in here. We're going to see that there are some foramina, for example, foramen ovale and foramen rotundum are both part of the greater wing. Then we have the horizontal plate. The horizontal plate is part of the palatine bone. So this is the horizontal plate here. Palatine bone, it makes up part of the hard palate. Posterior 25% or so, 20-25%. And if we look on the white skull, it's a little more challenging to see where the parietal ends and the maxillary begins. It's pretty close to there. So this is the horizontal plate of the palatine bone. Then we have the lamboidal suture, although usually I say lambidoidal to help you remember how to spell it. Technically it's the lamboidal. And the lamboidal suture looks like an upside down V, which is the same thing as a lambda. The capital lambda looks like an upside down V, separating the occipital bone from the two parietal bones primarily. Then we have the lesser wing of the sphenoid. Lesser wing of the sphenoid, I'm just going to show you in the white skull. It's not that good in the red skull. Well, maybe I'll show it to you. This is the lesser wing here. It looks a little bit like the cranial end of a manta ray. These would be the eye pods. Okay, so that's the sphenoid bone, lesser wing. And you can see it here. It's not quite as nice, but um, this is the lesser wing here of the sphenoid. Then we have the mandibular fossa. That one's tricky because most people feel if it's a mandibular fossa, it must be on the mandible. The mandibular fossa is named for the bone it touches the mandible. It's part of the temporal bone. So here's the mandibular fossa. Some of you probably heard of temporal mandibular joint syndrome. That happens at the mandibular, uh, temporal mandibular joint between the temporal bone and the mandible right here. You can also see in this skull, the white one, um, there's this piece of funky looking stuff that's supposed to represent a meniscus cartilage that you find between the mandible and the temporal bone. Then we have the mandibular or sigmoid notch. <coughs> the sigmoid notch or mandibular notch is between the condyloid and the coronoid processes of the mandible. By the way, coronoid process, there's a coronoid process on the ulna bone, uh, but that will obviously not be part of the skull exercise.